Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 132. And uh, gosh, Aaron, there's a, a couple really big things happening for, for the league, really, um, for the Sharks in, in particular, but then also uh, Jack Eichel. So we're going to be talking about uh, William Eklund um, leaving the Sharks, if you will, going yeah. to Sweden. Uh, some people like the move, some people don't like the move, some people don't like the move for specific reasons. We'll be getting into that stuff, but uh, Eichel is another big hot topic right now. Yeah, big big trade from uh, Buffalo finally, and he went to the Vegas Knights, not the Calgary Flames, which everyone else was thought he was going to go to, or the San Jose Sharks. Right. In exchange for Evander Kane. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, we'll be talking about that as well as the uh, games from the past week and upcoming games as well. So you're going to start the show? Ready? Cool. I want to give you guys a preview of next season's Movember mustache. Here, tell me what you think here. Oh my god, it's getting bigger. <laughs> I don't know, can they tell the difference? Okay, so William Eklund, what, when you have a face like you wanted to say something? No, it's just, oh. I can't get over that mustache. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I can't take you seriously. <laughs> Coming from a guy looking like this. <laughs> anyway, William Eklund going back to, uh, is it Jurgarden? I guess how you pronounce it? Sure. Okay. We'll go He's with going that. back to Sweden. Yes. Uh, who will be playing for that team. That team is uh, kind of lower in the ranks there, so he's going to have an opportunity mm-hmm. to help them get better, which is... Uh, you know, great for the team, obviously. So um, we have some clips here. I think Aaron wants to kind of set these ones up, but um, the media was talking with uh, with William there, and mm-hmm. uh, go ahead, set it up. Well, they announced uh, I think before the New Jersey game, a day before at practice, that he's going to be going back to Sweden. So uh, he got a chance to say or talk with the media and remind, uh, just remember that this guy is a 19 year old kid and <laughs> probably has no media training or not enough media training. So. Uh, his answers were very short. It was kind of hard to pull a clip from, but he was at the time he was very emotional about it. Um, I think he was kind of in shock and and not expecting it. So um, we'll roll the clip. This is uh, I think Kevin Kerr's in the beginning asking him uh, what he thought and why uh, he's being sent down. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I did what I could to stay here, and I was just trying to do my best every day, and but. Of course, rules are rules, and uh, yeah. Um, you, you know, how, how do you feel you, you played? Um, you know, I, you were in the top six, obviously, going up against the other team's top lines. How was that experience for you, and, and, and where do you think you can improve? Like, where you, you know, where are you going to think of improving when you go back? Yeah, I think it's been swing good from my side. Uh, you know, playing against the other guys' top six, and just – yeah, being as good defensively as you have to be offensively. And so, um, of course, that's some stuff that I had to improve my game, and I will do that. So, visibly upset. Yeah, and kind of short answers. Yeah. And I think, I mean, he it almost sounds like he found out the news like two minutes before, and they're like, here, go, yeah. go sit down and talk to these people about it and he's just like he seemed very distracted yeah. in a lot of the answers he kept looking around the room um not you know i mean i don't know what their setup is because that looked like a zoom call so he was probably in front of a laptop or something because the yeah it wasn't like a nice quality camera it wasn't like a full-on press conference so right. um so yeah it, it was it was kind of weird and awkward but uh yeah he was he's very visibly upset and yeah. sad to go yeah, and, and like you said, he's a 19 year old uh, kid, mm-hmm. you know, and it's kind of like your girlfriend breaking up with you, sort of, you know, not not quite the same, but all of a sudden you've got to do this interview, yeah. right? <laughs> so it's like what? Um, and, and I think there was some folks that maybe thought that, you know, it, it was kind of lost in translation. Some of the the interview, maybe looking back at Tomas Hurdle and uh, the way that he was responding mm-hmm. to questions asked of him, his English obviously not not very good at that time, yeah. gotten much better. I think William Eklund's English is much better than Hurdle's was. I think he just got kind of choked up. And there was a, a question, I think, the, the second round that Curtis Pichelka, I think it was, that got in there. Mm-hmm. The first question he asked on the second attempt, um, you could see him kind of going like this. And, you know, he's been wiping over on his eye and everything. And, um, you know, it's just kind of an emotional thing for the guy. And, I you know, I feel for him. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll, he'll be back stronger than ever, of course, you know. But um, it just... 
you know, one of those things, I don't think he was prepared for that news. And he, he had said, you know, I tried everything I could to stay. I did everything that I could to, uh, to make it to the club. Uh, but, you know, rules are rules. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's what they decided to do with him. So um, I'm not sure uh, where you want to go. You want to talk about Hurdle's comments first before we kind of jump into it, right? Sure. Okay. Um, we got a clip here because uh, right after this, Coach Scherr and Hurdle and also uh, John McClain, who's interim head coach right now for Bugner, who's out through COVID protocol, um, they were all asked about it. So I pulled the one from Hurdle simply because Hurdle's answers are one big long sentence, and I think it's <laughs> hilarious. So there's two questions asking Hurdle about um, – Kind of, kind of going back to his experience at that age because um, back when Hurdle was 19 years old or 18 years old, he came into the Sharks and they sent him back to the Czech Republic for another full season, came back, and he mentions in his answer, it's kind of hard to understand, but right. that Kocher also uh, went back to juniors for a year and then and then came yeah. to play on the Sharks. So it's it's kind of a growth process. Um, so here's the here's the two clips. It's gonna be, Actually, it's one clip, uh, two answers from Tomas Hurdle here. Uh, so two very long sentences. <laughs> we play together. I just like so we talk to him, you know, like it's it's not easy, you know, it's for sure tough for him, you know, and and you know, he's really sad because you know he was fighting for the spa, but at the same time, you know, like you know, me and Kush talked to him because we kind of been the same, you know. I was one year playing in Czech League, Kush was playing back in junior, and you know, and and just just be ready, you know, like you we knew you will, you will be elite player, you will play many years in this league. You have to just keep working on your game, just get stronger and play best you can next year and you will be top player next year you know you will be, be for sure playing top two lines and and just work on yourself you know and i think i think it's be good for him you know like another year back home and just play in men's hockey in sweden and he will come and he will be dominate player next year and forward because we we, we saw it he, he makes a lot of good plays and he got the big potential in him but he has to just keep working on him and he will be elite player Curtis. Well, so you, you just touched on this about um, when the Sharks sent you back to the Czech League in, in your draft year. What was the difference like for you, you know, from a 18 year old to a 19 year old coming coming back to uh, San Jose that second year? Yeah, you know, like I was like kind of like I, I feel like William because, you know, I I was still young, you know, like not really mature, you know, not hair on the face, you know, like some guys, you know, they like have hair since 16, you know, and I, I feel like William is kind of like same like me, kind of like maybe like be mutual later. So I, I think, you know, that's, that's what, what some, you can do really nothing about it. You know, just, you need the time, you know, like get from the kind of kids to the, you know, man, you know, I think I was kind of similar position and I was 18. I was still like, you know, like, uh, I was still a big guy, but at the same time, like a little baby face, you know, so, so I think it's really, really helping, but you know, it's, but he, he proved it, you know, I, I, I was for sure a little different because I was right away, play back home, you know, he play, you know, here nine games, you know, have really good games, you know, play top two lines, you know, power play everything, you know, so it's for sure hard for him, but it's for sure, I think it will help him forward, you know, to be, you know, really good player in NHL. Okay, so, so tell me what you think about this because the thoughts are really, everybody wants to hear about them. Fun must be always. <laughs> I, I love her. I love the guy. I, it's so awesome. He's phenomenal. We're not making fun of him. No, don't worry. No, no. Um, I, I think it's great. But he he makes great points. He he um, And they both, both Curl and Couture yeah. talk to him about it. So um, I, I think, you know, Eklund understands for the most part what's going on. And, oh, and, yeah. The G- and both, I think it was uh, Doug Wilson and Doug Wilson Jr. had talked to him and and told him what was going on and what they expect of him and why they're sending him. Yeah. So it wasn't like completely out of the blue. But um, yeah, anyway, let's let's dig into what our thoughts well, are. Well, the first thing you say, he, he, you think he understands. I, of course, I think he understands that, you know, the whole nine game thing, first of all, right? Right. Um, that's the reason that they, they sent Could him Could you down. explain that to people? So the so. nine games, basically, uh, as a prospect, you're, you can play up to nine games without your entry-level contract kicking in. So if they play him the 10th game, essentially that first year of his contract comes into play. If they don't play him that 10th game and they only play him the nine and then they send him either to the AHL mm-hmm. or to back to your garden or if they were to send him anywhere, quite frankly, yeah. um, it, his, he wouldn't have his 10th game in the NHL. His contract would not kick in, which means we get to have him next season starting his first year of that contract and so therefore cheap. exactly cheap. 
because entry level contracts are mm-hmm. what is he like 900k maybe something like that at the most yeah 950 yeah. with incentives and in yeah right so so basically what they're doing is they're kind of saying well we're not sure if we're going to be good this season so we'll go ahead and push out that contract uh, to start one year later kind of kind of I also think it's a long game play because of cap space right. issues. I think if the Sharks didn't have so many large contracts that sure. were on the books, I don't think this would be such a big issue. But I think they're trying to play that. Plus, Doug Wilson Jr., he was quoted as saying, we don't want, uh, we want game changers. We want him to be a game changer, yeah. not a contributor. Right now, he's a contributor. What they mean by that is they want him to be a dominant player who comes back. Think of, go back to Tomas Hurdles, yeah. the perfect example yeah. for this. When he first started in the league, he was a great player. He was really good, but he wasn't consistent enough. He wasn't the type of player that he is now where he can dominate a line and a shift and everything, and everything goes through him. That's that's the kind of player that they want William Eklund and who they believe he will be. So a different type of player than Hurdle. He's not physically strong like no. that. It's a much different type of player, but um, the sense that, holy cow, this William Eklund guy, you could throw anyone on his line and they're going to do well. Yeah. That's where they want him to be. That's why they're sending him back, more so than the, the the contract had to play in it, but that sure. wasn't the only reason. Well, it's not uncommon at all, Correct. right? It's not yeah. uncommon to have somebody get nine games and then uh, send them back, right? I'm sure, I mean, was Hurdle in that same vein? Was he a nine game guy that they sent? Was Couture that same way? Did they have him nine games and send? I can't remember. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's not uncommon, I guess, is, mm-hmm. is the point there, right? So. Okay, let's let's dive in a little bit here. So I think a lot of people didn't like the fact that Eklund was off of the Sharks. And I think for those folks, I don't think that they understand fully what we just talked about, mm-hmm. right? The, the whole nine game thing. It's not that they think he's not good enough, period. It's that they do want him to go develop some more. They gave him specifically nine games in the NHL, not to see what he was capable of necessarily, but... Uh, well, maybe that's just exactly why. They, they knew they wanted him to go uh, back to Sweden or back at AHL, wherever else. They didn't want him to play more than nine games, but they did want him to get the taste of it. They did want him to, to get a, a feel for what the competition was going to be like and for them to see what he was capable of doing against that competition. So I think for those people that wanted him to stay on the team, I think Doug Wilson Jr. had said, you know, it doesn't make sense to have him go in there, play, maybe score a handful of goals, you know, for 82 games, be exhausted, mm-hmm. right? And it again, a contributor, but not really a game changer. They want him yep. to develop. So I think even Doug Wilson kind of had said this, this is the reason why we're doing it. Not because we think he's not good enough and we're going to send him away. It's because they, they have a plan for him, right? Um, Most the, of his points were coming from the power play team. Yeah. So he was be- becoming a power play specialist. Right. Five on five play. Not that it was terrible, but he wasn't doing what he was doing on the power play, getting points and helping the team so it, it's it the nine games is a, I like that they have this option yes. kind of because it kind of gives those guys a cup of coffee in mm-hmm. the NHL level now they can see what it's going to take and go back and work on those things and again to I think Doug Wilson's point like or Doug Wilson Jr. Um, he was afraid of getting 50 games in and he has seven power play goals no yeah. even strength goals and you know 20 points 30 points maybe that's just it's not or not 30 right. points it's 50 games but 20 points you know his confidence level is not going to be there you're going to you see this around in, in the league where other players um Pooley Arby is probably a really good example yeah. in Edmonton where they played him very young 18 19 he wasn't cutting it they sent him back to Europe I think after his like third or fourth season in the NHL and then he came back and now he's dominating he's doing very well I mean he's who wouldn't dominate with Connor David, David on your line but, but yeah. still they tried it even a couple years ago and he wasn't quite there um, so this happens a lot around the league. It's not just yeah. specific to this situation. Right. So there's there's those folks. There's the folks that wanted him to stay in the NHL. And to those folks, I say, unfortunately, you don't, you don't quite get it. <laughs> uh, and that's okay. Um, the folks that think that he ought to be um, moved off of the team, given some experience on another team, they, there's typically two veins of thought now. And, and this is where Aaron and I differ. Mm-hmm. So... Aaron thinks that it was the right move to go back to, I'm going to butcher this, your garden, Sweden. You should say Sweden. Sweden, to go back to Sweden. Um, I, on the other hand, feel that it would have been a better move. Not necessarily that it's a bad move going to Sweden. I just think that it would be a better move for him to play with the Barracuda. For those of you who don't know, 
the nine games, playing with the Barracuda does not count towards that 10th game. So he'd be able to play in the AHL mm -hmm. uh, without it disrupting the whole entry-level contract thing. So um, why don't you start, let them know why you think that it was the right move going to Sweden. Go. Well, it was the right move. <laughs> so because they I, already did it, so they agree with duh. me. Right? Go no, ahead. I think uh, sending him back to Sweden um, is a safer play. Putting him in the a AHL, there's. Uh, I mean, I see why you'd want it because of the ice situation. So oh, we'll the, get there. The ice in Sweden is bigger. It's, it's international ice, so that means it's wider than NHL ice. There's more space out there. When you play on NHL ice, it's it's a lot tighter. You have to think quicker. You have to act quicker. So it's much. Much different game, I guess. There's still a lot of speed. I think there's more speed, like foot speed, in international ice because you have more space. You have more room to, to skate around. So you, you typically see better skaters come out of there. Less banger kind of players, like big, big guys that can hit. Um, but anyway, I, I think it's a better move because he's playing against men. The AHL to me is a roughly, you know, 20 to 22 year old league. Mm -hmm. There you're going to get a bigger mix of players. He's home, maybe not with his family exactly because he's going to be playing, but uh, more comfortable for him. Um, the Sharks already know what he's going to do. They already know what kind of player he's going to be. There's only so much that he's going to develop. He just needs more consistency, uh, more uh, confidence, and more muscle he just needs to get bigger he's physically smaller and i kind of i went back and forth with some people on twitter about this a couple days ago and they announced it um and they're like well johnny gaudreau's tiny you know that was one of the <laughs> arguments he's one of the smallest guys in the nhl i think he's five six hundred and seventy pounds he's smaller yeah. than eckland i'm like well it's a little different and he didn't come up and play i had to look it up i'm like he didn't play at 19 i think he came in at 20 hmm. so he even had a year um there's another player, is it Mason Raymond, the rookie in, in Detroit, uh, went back a year, is playing now at 20, and is the Calder favorite now. He's got like 13 points in, mm -hmm. I don't know, he's almost a point per, per game player. He is a difference maker, not a contributor. Right. This is exactly where they want him to be, so that's, a, that's like a perfect example of what we're expecting to see coming, having him come back. now. I think it's better to go, it's safer to go to Sweden than it is to AHL. AHL also has a bunch of goons trying to make their way up to the NHL. Not quite full on goons, sure. but there's more third, fourth line guys trying to make a name for themselves and they're going to attack a skilled player, especially if that skilled player destroys them and makes them, embarrasses okay. them, right? Yeah. Like they're going to they're gonna take it personally and they're going to pummel them. I think that's, it's a safer bet to send them to Sweden. Go ahead. What do you think? Okay. Um, I, I guess for for me, um, the only thing that I heard that is a deterrent that the SHL would offer over the AHL was that there aren't as many goons. Because everything that, that you just said can happen in the AHL. He's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger. He's going to get faster. He's going to get older. He'd probably get taller. Um, yeah. I mean, a, a, all those things are going to happen regardless. He could be playing EASHL. He's going to get bigger, stronger, right? So um, I just haven't heard anything that, not from you necessarily, just just I haven't heard anything that is a specific reason why Sweden is better. But I can come up with reasons why the AHL would be better. And it has a lot to do with the trainers, the uh, the scouts, the, the eyes on him, uh, making sure that he's doing the things that they're asking him to do. I'm sure he'll do it anyway, but being able to be right there with him um, helping him along the way, having that mentorship in Tomas Hurdle, in Logan Couture, um, in any of those guys, Eric Carlson, having those guys right there with you along the way uh, when you're doing your workouts, um, learning English. You're going to learn English probably a lot faster when you're there. Um, mm -hmm. it, the the rink size obviously is a big one. I'm not even going to harp on that because that's that's obvious. But the officiating is going to be more like-minded in the AHL than it will be in the NHL. The strategies that you're going to be learning with the CUDA are the same strategies that you learn with the Sharks. So I'm just not seeing a compelling reason why the SHL is the better choice. I think it's the right choice to have him not play with the Sharks. I'm just not sure that it's the better choice as compared to 
what the AHL might offer. If we want to bubble wrap <laughs> Eklund, and maybe we do, and I'm cool with that, if we want to bubble wrap him, that is the compelling argument for me to send him to Sweden outside of it's familiar, right? But again, um, and his English is good, don't get me wrong, but if we're trying to get him acclimated more to the culture in San Jose, right. um, again, the officiating, because that's going to be very different. Um, the, the general rules, there are nuances to the NHL game that are different from international play. Uh, things like that. I just, for, for me, I think the AHL makes more sense. And I know you had a point that you wanted to bring up about, and actually go ahead. I think you, you remember what you're about to say. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think if he were to play, I think there's a couple other reasons why. Going back to when he originally signed his contract and was coming into camp, um, I'm trying to remember what the rule was. If you weren't in the a NHL, if you were a first round pick, which he was, you were allowed to go play at the Barracuda. There was a special thing to go play in the AHL. Normally, if he was a second round pick, he wouldn't be allowed to because he was 19 years old. He wouldn't be allowed to play at the Barracuda. He would have to go back to Sweden. So because he was a first round pick, there's a clause in there that he was allowed to do it. Going back to what he had said way back before I think training camp had started and he had just signed his contract, he said he was willing, he wanted to make the Sharks and was willing to play in the AHL mm -hmm. if briefly, if it meant he would get called back up. Mm -hmm. The Sharks probably said, we're not going to call you back up right. for the rest of the season. He probably wanted to go back to Sweden if that was the case, but that was probably, you know, originally set a while before. Right. I'm sure they talked about it as well. The other thing is if they aren't going to call him back up, he plays in the AHL and dominates, he's going to be a huge distraction because every media person, if the Sharks are struggling and you have this guy playing for the Barracuda that's yeah. 80 points in 50 games, why isn't he getting called up to the Sharks? Well, they want him to develop. They right. want him to, to work on his skills. So he would be a huge distraction from every media outlet going, why don't you call up Eklund? Like, he's already done enough in the AHL. He can't do any more. Right. He should be in the NHL. My question then would be, if he was tearing it up, had 80 points in 50 games, why wouldn't you call him up, though? Like, make the call up. He's, he's, he's developed, right? That's one part. The second part would be, if he's tearing it up in the SHL, now, the media is not in his face necessarily, but they would make the same case, wouldn't they? I don't know. It's harder to... It, uh, to me, it's like, okay, he scored 80 points in 50 games in the SHL. What does that translate to? You know, it's okay. different, right? Okay. You don't really think... Of it. When it's AHL, you're kind of like... You kind of raise your eyebrows like, oh, that's that's pretty similar. See, but I hear people saying SHL is uh, as competitive as the AHL, right? I think it is. I think, Which it's, I think it's similar, yeah. I think it's actually... I don't know how much longer we want to talk about it, but like, I feel <laughs> like I feel like with the SHL, when we look at it, Okay, there's prospects that have not been drafted yet. There's players who never got drafted. So they weren't good enough to get drafted. And then there's players that were too old mm -hmm. to play in the AHL anymore because of the rules that they have, uh, but not good enough to play in the NHL. So to me, it seems like you've either got young prospects, guys who couldn't hack it, or old guys. <laughs> Right, well, so the young prospects that are playing un undrafted, yeah, yeah, that yeah, are yeah. good, like Eklund was, those are few and far in between. That's right. a very special case. There's probably only one or two at most. Right. Eklund's one of them. Right. So I, I, I don't think there's that many. Then there's the ones that get drafted, but they want them to wait a year or two and then bring them over to mm -hmm. AHL or, or the juniors or whatever. Um, and then you get, like you said, the the guys that are kind of too old. But you also get the former NHLers that right. retire. They're Swedish and they go back home and they yep. want to play and they're probably in their mid to late thirties, um, so that you get you get a wide range. I think it's better that better doing it that way. Plus, they're all Swedish. Mostly, are all Swedish speaking Swedish. Sure, yeah. I'm sure they all speak they all speak English over there anyway. So it's not like it's. I don't think it's as big of a deal to sure. not be immersed. I mean, his English is fine. He understands yeah, yeah. everything. Um, but anyway, I, I, to me, I still think that sending him back there was a better idea. May, uh, one of the main reasons, again, is because of that distraction, I think. Okay. Let us know what you think in the comments <laughs> down below because, uh, I mean, this was something that was kind of hotly contested all over social media, so between uh, Twitter and Facebook. 
and uh, every other place you could think of, uh, people were getting really upset about it. And again, uh, I love the passion from the fan base, um, but but it did make sense. This is where Aaron and I agree. Uh, it did make sense to not have him play with the Sharks, uh, let him go ahead and develop. Again, like he said, three points on the power play and then 1.5 on five, and they were all assists. He couldn't bury it. Um, but to be expected, he's 19 years old, you know? And I'm not disappointed. Yeah, I'm, neither I'm, am I. I mean, I'm going into, uh, was it the rookie camp? I thought Bugner had said he wasn't very impressed. Not that he wasn't impressed, but he was kind of expecting more. But then going into training camp, yeah. he stuck around. He was like, oh, wow, he's getting better. Like, he, he was improving quickly. Mm-hmm. So he's a quick learner. Um, so, I, it's again, it's not like, it's not a knock on him. Yeah. People are upset, like, oh, it's going to ruin his his confidence because they cut him. Like, <laughs> no, that's that's not how that works at this level. No. Like, they, yeah, he's he will be fine. He's a big boy. I'm he's 19, to, but he's a big boy. I'm trying to remember who said it now, but it was that he's been cut from teams and he's he had to work harder. Article. Yeah. yeah. He's been cut every single year of his life yeah. from teams, and then that made him come back and work harder. Right. That's the kind of person he is. So I, I have no... No qualms. I, I have no. Um, I fully expect him to come back next year and dominate and be in the top six role. And let's be fair. I think regardless of which league he plays in this season, aside save the NHL, whichever league he plays in, he's going to come back mm-hmm. bigger, faster, stronger, uh, more intelligent with the puck, more intelligent away from the puck. He'll be a better player. It doesn't matter where he plays. Um, so I think that's that's a moot point. It, whether he would be better in the AHL or better in, in the SHL in terms of coming back and playing the next season, it's not going to matter. He's going to be a better player. So look forward to that next season. Keep your eye on the guy because he's going to do good things. Maybe we'll check in every now and then yeah. to see how he's doing. Absolutely. Maybe get some highlights in there. We would love to do that. <laughs> so again, one more time, please let us know what you guys think. Put it in the comments down below. If we uh, dissed your viewpoint, I apologize. Uh, but we will we'll happily uh, hit it with a like if you uh, if you do want to put that in there so everyone can see. Okay, moving on from the San Jose Sharks, uh, kind of a weird thing. We're going to be talking about Buffalo here, uh, not just Buffalo really, but the Vegas Golden Knights as well. Jack Eichel getting traded from the Buffalo Sabers. Now the the way that the terms worked, it was conditional first and thirds. More or less, we're just going to say that it was Jack Eichel and a third uh, going to Vegas. Vegas sending over. Peyton Krebs, who was uh, the draft pick in 2019, he was 17th overall. Mm-hmm. I think he's 20 years old. Supposed to be really good, but maybe a little bit overvalued. Whatever. Uh, then you've got Alex Tuck, who I believe was injured, but uh, he's on his way to Buffalo as well, along with a top 10 protected first mm-hmm. uh, and a third, which could turn into a second, depending on whether or not that is right. in the top 10. Yep. Cool. There's I, a whole lot going on there. I think. I think Buffalo. Could have gotten more. Yes. Um, I think they kind of screwed themselves and, and have read about this too because they should have done it during the draft uh, over the summer instead of waiting until the season started because at that point, no team is going to move a bunch of players um, or less teams would, right? Less teams would be able to. And they would be able to go over the cap space yeah. and then they have all summer to figure out how to get rid of the cap space, right? right? So right. And right now, Vegas is trying to figure out. How to oh, Vegas! Right now, they have three guys, including Eichel, four guys actually, including Eichel on long-term IR. So they have Mark Stone on long-term IR, yeah. not just IR, long-term IR. Uh, Mark Stone, Patrick. uh, Max Pacioretty, Eichel, and then there's one other scrub player that's on long-term <laughs> IR. Um, so they have it's rude. I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> no players are scrubs in there. True, NHL. but it's rude. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, they're gonna have they're gonna have to make some moves when all three are back, and I think Eichel has a three month return, three to um, five, three to five, yeah. right? The earliest would be three months, so they have some time to figure it out. But once he is coming back, assuming that Vegas is in a playoff spot, because right now they are not, um, what they're gonna have to do? They're gonna have to move some pieces to to make the cap space work. So. Don't I? I fully expect you know Vegas isn't going to be done moving pieces. Maybe not right away, but something's going to have to give. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And and a little background on Jack Eichel. He was uh, second in his draft year, 2015, I believe. Uh, second the only to Connor McJesus, oh. <laughs> the chosen one. That that 2015 draft year was unreal. If you go back and look, how in that first round, how many NHL players came right. out of there and came out? Timo Myers that draft yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. 
and you have Miko Rantanen, Rantanen, you have McDavid, you have Eichel, you have like so many yeah. players. It's just ridiculous. Um, it's it's easier to look at what players have not made the NHL and go, man, you really messed that draft up. You know, <laughs> it's just there's that many. It's it's probably one of the best drafts in a very long time the NHL in terms of how many NHL players came out of it and good quality players, yeah. high end players. Um, so yeah, anyway, Jack Eichel, if it was any other year in the draft, he would have been first overall play, uh, pick, but he was second overall because of McDavid. And McDavid, man, well worth that pick. Yeah, yeah crazy skill. Franchise, all world, all everything, all universe. The guy's just incredible. Did you see, there was, I will we'll go back to Eichel in a second here, but there was a play <laughs> where you talk about Jesse Pujarvi. Um McDavid had the puck in the neutral zone, and Pujarvi was stuck in the offensive zone, so he was waiting for him to get out. And he's literally just like hanging out by himself in the neutral zone, just kind of stick handling. As soon as Pujarvi gets out, he just darts into the zone, beats four players, and just and scores. Scores. And, and it's just, it's just. I wish I could say I, it surprises me anymore, but the guy's just incredible. It's not fair. But someone had uh, had said on Twitter that McDavid was assessed a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar fine uh, to cover the costs of taking the five New York Rangers to school or something like that. It's just like, yeah, I know. I just, I mean, it's crazy. But we're not talking about McDavid. We're talking right. about Jack Eichel. Right. Um, herniated disc. I don't know much about uh, herniated disc, but it sounds bad. So it's in his neck, and the problem with, that he had with Buffalo, I mean, one of many, I think, is he wanted to get a disc replacement surgery, and the Buffalo Sabers said no because nobody has ever had that surgery uh, and played in the NHL. So he would be the first NHL player to ever go through with that surgery. Other players have had this happen, and they have fusion surgery. So. Buffalo is more was being conserved and said yeah. other players have done it. Do this, we will do this for you. And under the collective bargaining agreement, the teams have the last say for surgeries or procedures or whatever else. So I wouldn't be surprised if that is now going to be brought to the table yeah. for the next bargaining agreement. For the players, they're going to throw that out and say we need to change this because it's our bodies, right? Yeah. They want to figure out what they want to do for themselves. So. Um, Anyway, so Buffalo ended up trading him, and Vegas said, we will do the disc replacement surgery. Now, this is one of the reasons why I didn't want the Sharks to get him, because it would probably have cost, I don't know, I would say Hurdle, probably Eklund, and a first-round pick, and the Sharks just wouldn't be able to recover, even though they get Jack Eichel, who is a dominant first-line center, but how unbroken will he be after the surgery? There's a risk there that he won. The worst case scenario, he'd never play again. Yeah. Best case scenario, he comes back uh, better than ever. It's probably somewhere in between there, right? I think a lot of people look at what Vegas paid and are, are going, why didn't we go after this guy? Now you said Hurdle, Eklund. What Vegas gave up ain't even close. To hurdle Eklund, right? I so I, I don't, I don't think it's um, it. We would have to have given up that cal. I think we believe that that's what it should have cost. It's also a cap space issue. He's ten million dollars a season for right. four more years. Right. Who would we have to give up to? Who would we give up that ve- that Buffalo would take? Right. That would get us to work under that cap. If Kane was, <laughs> if Kane was terminated, his contract's terminated. Yeah. That's seven million. Yeah. So we're almost there. Mm-hmm. Then you need another four yeah. going the other way. Yeah. Hurdle makes six, but he's a UFA. They right. probably wouldn't have taken him because Hurdle would have been like, I'm not signing a Buffalo. Yeah. Like, I want to hit. If he's going to hit for agency, he wants to get top dollar, not get Buffalo, you know, shortchanging him. So um, I just, the, to me, the Sharks wouldn't have had enough pieces or they would have to overpay to make it happen, right. not give up what Vegas did. No two teams are going to be alike. Like, Calgary, for instance, yeah. Um, the rumor was that they were going to send Kachuk plus a, another first-round pick and a uh, first-round prospect. They didn't name it; they just said first-round prospect and another prospect. Like to me, the haul would have been better to getting it from Calgary, but for whatever reason, they went with Vegas instead. So who knows? Yeah, well, I mean, the I saw Elliot Friedman interviewing um, interviewing Jack there, and that was one of the things that he brought up was this is something that's going to be at the forefront of the collective bargaining agreement, mm-hmm. right? Uh, because right now it's my body, team's choice. And Jack brought up a very good point. He says, I'm the only one that's going to have to live with this after it's all said and done. 
So um, it, it should be what I want, right? And I can understand from the team's viewpoint, essentially you're an asset mm -hmm. and they want to protect their asset. And if he has an, a surgery that no one's ever done before and still played in the NHL, and you've got four years left and $10 million a it's year. 40 million bucks on the line. That's, I mean, uh, maybe a handshake agreement. Like if this doesn't go well and you can't play, you and we terminate this contract, we cancel it, right? Yeah, but, and, that, and yeah, that wouldn't happen. Cause the NHLPA would be like, uh, no. Nope. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> So who knows? But um, one way or another, I think, yeah, this is going to be one of those things, like you said, with the CBA that is kind of at the front of it. And they say, you know, OK, we need to revisit uh, what the teams do and don't get to say in these types of situations. Now, this is a very unique situation. We're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, a, a neck surgery, right? It's not right. just like a broken arm or something like that. So, um, you know, who knows uh, how that's going to go. But it's just sad that he had this issue going back to, like, I think March or yeah. last year, maybe even sooner. So he could have had the surgery and been done with it and been back way before the season even started. Sure. Like even rehab and ready for training camp, ready to go, he would have been completely, assuming the surgery was fine and he was able to play, yeah. he could have been completely healthy and ready to go. So Buffalo just looks really bad in this situation, I think. Yeah, no, they, they, it's, they're painted in a very bad light here. So, uh, and if I'm Alex Tuck, I'm going. <laughs> if you're any free agent, you're going to look at yeah. Buffalo and be like, I don't want to go play no, there. Totally. That's how they're going to treat their players, right? Yeah. And that's one thing about the Sharks is you've always heard that they treat their players uh, with respect. And so. Let's talk about that with Vegas a little bit. Yeah. They just traded Alex Tuck away, who they loved and wanted to keep for a long time, mm -hmm. or so they said, right? This is now another situation where they traded a couple guys that, uh, I'm trying to think of the other, other examples. Uh, Shea Theodore got traded. Yep. He signed and didn't have, a, uh, didn't have a no trade clause because they told him he didn't need one. He'd be there forever. There's no loyalty whatsoever to these players. And I'm not saying that there needs to be, but I think there's going to be kind of uh, down the line, you're going to see some repercussions here where it's going to come down to Vegas or someone else for a free agent and they're going to choose that other place because they're going to like, Vegas is going to not let, they're not going to sign me to a no trade clause. They're going to want me to sign a team friendly yeah. deal because yeah. I have to get under the cap. Sure, I want to play in Vegas and win a cup and it's Vegas. But if you have, <laughs> when you sign a team friendly deal, that means you're a team friendly deal to anybody in the league and you're yeah. going to get traded. Yeah, That's why I, I get so upset when people are like, Maybe Tomas Hurdle will stay in San Jose and, and sign a team-friendly deal. He's already on a team-friendly yeah. deal. That man needs to get paid. That's why the other thing that people get upset about is like how, how Doug Wilson could have paid Vlasic and Burns and, and Carlson because uh, maybe not so much Carlson, but Vlasic and Burns, who were long-time Sharks, like they were underpaid before that. Vlasic was underpaid, yeah. I think, yeah. almost his entire career until he got that big contract. Like it's a reward for what they have done because they've been under a team friendly deal. You don't you're not gonna sign a team friendly deal your entire career, right? right? You gotta get paid yeah. at some point. Yeah, I mean, and I think the only reason anybody should sign a team-friendly deal is, like, when you look in Colorado, right? Like, uh, it was McKinnon was saying, I think, you know, I will take less money to, so, to keep this team together. But you never know if that team's going to stay together. So you probably shooting yourself in the foot doing something like that. Hopefully for Colorado, he's not doing that. But, right. um, yeah, you just never know. But there's a difference, though, I think, between um, deception. When you tell someone that you're going to be here, you know, you don't need that, that uh, no-trade clause. When you tell somebody that and then... Ship them off. Absolutely. There's a difference between between that and Or trading a guy the day before his no movement clause <laughs> kicks in, which they also did. Who was that? Vegas did that. Who was to, it uh, oh, I mean, We talked about this episodes ago, oh. and I can't remember who off the top of my head. Search through, find it, put it in the comments down below. Okay, you know what? We're done talking about all that stuff now. I hope Vegas burns in a fiery <laughs> whatever. And pit. There you go. Um, let's move on. Let's talk about the uh, games that we had this past week, and then we'll talk sure. about the games that are upcoming. So the games this past week, we'll go through them pretty fast here, but uh, we had uh, Reimer in net uh, for this first game. It was a 5-3 win against Buffalo. Buffalo, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you can't write this stuff up. <laughs> it's just too good. This was uh, the second, second game or first game that everyone got called up. Second game or third game. I don't know. We talked about it last show, so it couldn't have been the first game. Anyway, Ryan Markley got his first goal. Uh, first yeah. NHL goal in this game, so uh, he was he was playing well and looking pretty good and rewarded with his first goal. It was kind of a fluke goal, I don't know if you remember. It got it deflected off a defenseman like, and then 
What? Off his leg or something. Yeah, off his leg. And and when, I mean, goal's a goal. Nobody's going to complain. But it wasn't like a clean shot from the point or anything. But he did move his feet very well, kept the puck in, and was Mm -hmm. able to get into a shooting lane um, enough to make it go in. So good on Ryan Merkley. Hopefully one of many into going into his career. It's good to get that first one under your belt. You're not gripping the stick as tight, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, anything. Whatever. <laughs> so Reimer was in the net for that game, picks up the W. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next game they play against St. Louis. You got Aiden Hill in the net. Mm-hmm. 5 3 loss this time, though. So, um, but it wasn't as bad as the score indicates because that was an empty netter. Yeah, that was a tough one. Yeah. Um, I thought they played decently against St. Louis. But they, they couldn't finish it out. Um, and I think this is probably, you know, you've, you're missing four of your six defensemen. That normally play, I think it's gonna. You can. You're not gonna keep winning yeah. every game, right? So it kind of caught up with them. Um, and St. Louis is a good deep yeah. team, so uh, no surprise there. St. Louis should have been better last year, but they got hit with COVID and so many injuries that they just kind of, you know, stayed mediocre for most of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, so they returned most of those guys, and they're a very good, very good deep team. Uh, this was a a good team in the yeah. NHL that they lost to. So I don't. Know, I have no qualms about it because um, I thought they they played decently for so, for how little people in their lineup yeah. in their normal lineup. Yeah. So Sharks pick up the L there, but uh, they go right back to Reimer uh, when they play against the New Jersey Devils. Mm-hmm. That was a pretty phenomenal game, except for the outcome. Three two overtime loss. Again, let's take a look at the uh, uh, shootout loss. I'm sorry, shootout loss. Then that's not a row. <laughs> right. So that there, yeah, there you go. Okay, so uh, it was a three two shootout loss. Uh, but Reimer I thought played really well in that game. Uh, it was too bad because they didn't actually they weren't ever behind in that game uh, right. uh, until the end there so um they were never behind it was just a skills competition yeah right at the end yeah that's <laughs> it so so you got two games where Reimer plays and one's a win and one's and uh goes to the shootout for them to to, yeah. to lose it and then Aiden Hill unfortunately picks up the W in or I'm sorry the L in, in regulation so right. it's kind of going back to what you were talking about earlier about you think it's going to be two starts for Reimer to one start for Hill mm-hmm. uh, in this week it happened to play out that way and I think the stats show that Reimer was still the better of the two Yes, I think he's a little bit more settled, more experienced. Um, I think the team plays well in front of him. And I think Aiden Hell is a good yeah. goalie and will be good. Um, and I think they're just going to kind of bounce back and forth like this. Like, For instance, the next game coming up is Calgary, and they've already announced that Aiden Hill's going to be starting. So yeah. they're, they're completely alternating uh, goalies here. And then they announced in Winnipeg that Reimer's going to be playing that mm-hmm. one. Um, but going back to that New Jersey loss, the only thing I wanted to talk about was Merkley... Um, trying to stick handle out in front of his own net and got picked and then they they buried it and scored yeah. and then he didn't play the rest of the game i mean that was towards the end of the third period anyway and that's what tied the game um i wouldn't be surprised if we see merkley sit the next game in fact they called up uh i'm gonna mess it up can Kin- it's Kinesioff. not Kinesioff. is it Kinesioff? Kinesioff. Kinesioff. um this is the second round pick from 2019 uh very highly touted defenseman that should be a kind of high-end scoring left-handed left-handed shot. So is it Kinejov with a Y or is it Kinyatsev? Kinyatsev. Uh, that's sorry. the one you're talking about. Kinyatsev. Okay, all right. Because right. Kinejov was the one that was injured. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Not Kinejov. Okay. Kin- what is Kinyatsev? it? Kinyatsev. I'm gonna butcher these. I, I'm we gonna, need Dan on the show. I didn't say I need Dan and, and Randy to <laughs> announce it, and then I'll get it down. Um, but uh, he's he's. I, they didn't announce if he's in the lineup yet. We won't know that until tomorrow. But. Yeah. Uh, he got called up, so I wouldn't be surprised if maybe Merkley sits for a game here just because of that. Yeah, I know. I, and, and, you know, maybe it's just one of those things where he's kind of like, okay, it's I've been playing um, some tougher competition here, and I'm not quite used to that. So, uh, you know, throw him in in a very emergency-type situation where he didn't really get a chance to warm up, just kind of threw him to the fire there. But it's um, not bad if he's if he's scratched. You yeah. can watch the game from the press box and see yeah. a different angle, and especially the NHL game versus the AHL game. I don't think it was the same shift that he kind of fumbled the puck in front of the net uh, when he was trying to knock it out, and they end up scoring. But uh, it was I think it was the same game where he had the puck on a stick, and he got bumped off the puck. And then he gets the puck on a stick, he tries to dump it, and he flubs it. And then he's got the puck back on a stick again, and they knock him off the puck again. And it's like, this poor guy just could not get... <laughs> I felt bad for him almost, you know? It's like, dude, send change a forward, get another defenseman out there so that he can get the other defenseman uh, Merkley off and then throw the forward back on, right? Like He's a... He's... It's good for him. It's a making good, excuses. I'm just saying it's a good learning, <laughs> learning spot for him. Yeah. Because now he's going to know, like... 
man, even the scrubs in the NHL are going to chase you down and yeah. knock you off the puck. So you know you don't have the time that you do in the AHL or the OHL or wherever you're playing. Right. Um, the time, the space, and the speed are much different at the NHL level. So Tuesday, Calgary, we've got Hill and Net. Uh, expect not to see uh, Ryan Merkley <laughs> in, in the lineup there. Who are we playing on Thursday? Uh, Winnipeg. Winnipeg. It's, it's, all, it's okay. all on the road. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's, we're at now. Yep. Okay, okay. So we play Winnipeg, and then that's going to be Reimer back in net. And we didn't say anything about which goal is going to be in for the Saturday game. For the which one? The Saturday game. Uh, they haven't announced it. They haven't announced it no. yet. Okay, and Saturday we are playing uh, Colorado, in Colorado. And everyone that is on the COVID protocol should be back for that game. So uh, was it Carlson, Vlasic, um, Timo, Timo uh, LeBanc, LeBanc, right? Um, so you're going to see it. And Bob Bugner is going to be back behind the bench, so you're going to see all the regulars back to normal. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if they've announced or if, or if I haven't even really looked to see if anyone had any symptoms. I don't know if that's kind of private information, but it'll be interesting to see. I mean, those guys have been out for almost ten days now. Yeah, um, they are full, all fully vaccinated. So I would. It's kind of weird that you would be vaccinated, and have yeah bad symptoms, maybe a little bit like a cold, but not like uh, not like you're in bed for weeks or anything right so um but but you're also out of hockey for 10 days like yeah. there's only so much that you can do so we might see some sluggish players or some right. exhausted players especially here and then you're going to denver at the altitude <laughs> yeah to play man good luck it's gonna be a bad game i think it's par for the course playing for san jose though right right yeah so anyway no uh, excuses <laughs> Much expected. All right, so the Sharks currently fourth in the division, but uh, again, this is where Aaron and I like to say, pump your brakes, wait for <laughs> Thanksgiving, right? Wait right. for about yeah. 21 games, wait for Kane's return, uh, glorious with a cape and a he's crown. Not, he's not coming back. He's not coming back. <laughs> he's not coming back. <laughs> there is one guy I did want to talk about, though. Oh, yeah? Uh, Jonathan Dolan. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go he's, ahead. Yeah. He's been, uh, I don't want to say tearing it up, but... He is tied with Timo Meyer and Tomas Hurdle for the Sharks' lead in goal scoring. He's also second currently, as of yeah. tonight, second in the NHL for rookie scoring uh, behind Raymond in Detroit. Um, and he's sole possession of second place because yeah. it's uh, Raymond has six, he has five, and then there's a bunch that have four. How old's Dolan again? Uh, hmm. He's 22? Yeah, I was going to say he's still, okay. Yeah, Because he was a second round pick in 2017, I think. Okay. Because he was in Vancouver for, he was drafted by Vancouver right. and was there for at least two or three seasons, two seasons I think, and then he had the last two with us. Probably right? older than twenty two then, but I mean an, an older rookie, but still a rookie nonetheless. So he's yeah. got a little bit of extra experience. He's not. Outside. He's not Nabokov winning the Calder at thirty. <laughs> <laughs> that happened, by the way. <laughs> and they changed the rules because of Nabokov. Nice. Yeah. They changed the rules a lot because of the Sharks. Yeah. Sometimes because Sharks won something? No, we got to change Sometimes that. Sometimes because That's of playoffs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, they're fourth in the division right now. Um, it's it's nice seeing them still ahead of Vegas, but let, I'm not sure how long that's going to last. Yeah. Um, but again, let's wait and see uh, before anybody kind of gets uh, too hyped or maybe too down because we started off really high and we're kind of on a bit of a trajectory now in terms of the point gathering. So um again this is we do this every season guys just just calm it down <laughs> let's wait for about a quarter of the season to go by until we have an idea of really where the team's at and then we'll kind of go from there all right what are you expecting out of these games what, wins all wins what are you expecting and what would you be happy with <laughs> um i would be honestly looking at the competition i'd be happy with uh two out of the six points um i would like to see more than that obviously but if we can get uh just a single win um, out of the three, I think that's kind of what my expectation is, that we will get a win. Okay. Uh, probably Winnipeg, if I were to guess. Calgary looks a pretty strong team. And then uh, Colorado is just a monster. And you're going to be playing in altitude as well. Mm -hmm. So that one, I'm, I'm not saying it's one of those games that you could just draw up an L on the calendar necessarily, but it's, it's going to be a rough game, I think. Um, and especially, that's the game everybody's coming back. They're coming back, but they're probably still not ex they, in exactly game shape. So they could also be well rested. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> not they, banged up. Like if they got bruises, those are gonna be all gone. So yeah. they could physically feel healthier. I'm guessing if they were showing symptoms, they probably weren't on the rink practicing all the time though. So right. that's that's kind of my take on it. I feel like the Colorado game is gonna be a loss, and that's okay. Well, uh, I but I think they could go to the rink. 
until no. they tested negative. So they're probably only working out at home, basically. They could go to, does Patrick Marlowe still have an ice rink at his house? He had an ice rink? I think somebody had, one of them had an ice rink in their house, yeah. I Could think have it was been Marlo. Jumbo. Uh, sounds like a Jumbo thing to do. <laughs> Gotta go big, buddy. Um, okay, so uh, those are the games that are, are coming up. Anything else you want to say about the Well, I was going to say, I think they're going to win. I think they'll beat Calgary. Okay. And I think they'll beat Winnipeg. Really? Yeah. I think uh, Calgary's kind of a rough and tumble team. And to me, the Sharks have changed their whole chemistry and atmosphere. And they're not going to take any stuff from anyone. And I think that's Calgary's game, so I think they're going to give it back to him. Gadjevic. Yep. Gadge. <sighs> Not going to work. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could pronounce these names, man. Right. Okay, anyway, moving on from that, we've got two last things to talk about. One, of course, the nasty stashes here. <laughs> um, I, I showed you what uh, the preview at the top of the show, what, we're gonna, what I'm going to be looking like uh, next season there. I hope it doesn't get that big. I really hope it doesn't. It already is. Yeah. No, our, our buddy Iser, uh, he was talking about me putting wax on the sides and pulling Oof. it out. And I'm just going, I can't. Yeah. I'm just, just too nasty. <laughs> Regardless, um, if you haven't seen uh, our page, and, and Aaron mostly doing the heavy lifting here, uh, <laughs> has raised how much now? Uh, as of tonight was $1,000 for our uh, for the team collectively. That's, hey, yeah. thanks to you guys. Super awesome. Way to go. We appreciate you. So uh, we're just up here looking stupid. You're the guys, the ones... <laughs> that are uh, really making this work and making it happen. So that money going to a really good cause, we do appreciate it. It's not just something that we're doing just for fun. Uh, we've got some friends that have gone through uh, some stuff mm -hmm. and, and their parents and, and even you know uh, family members and friends that we know. So uh, this is kind of a personal thing for us too. So again, we thank you uh, very much for contributing and supporting. If you'd like to do that, by the way, we'll put the link right down here. It's movember.com slash T. I forgot to say that last time because it's T for team slash T slash the dash fin dash factor. It's also down below in the description. You can just click on it. Unless you're on the podcast, and in which case you're welcome. See, see, I'm thinking that's the difference. Okay, uh, so uh, we appreciate that again. Thank you. Uh, last thing, or do you want to say anything else about November? No, keep them coming. Keep them coming, love it. Okay, last thing, we want to talk about the Pride game, which you know all the details. Yep, it's on December 14th. It's a Tuesday night, and it's against the Seattle Kraken, the first ever game for the Seattle Kraken in San Jose. Uh, so it will be a historic game, wow. if you will. Um, there's a couple things going on here. So uh, there is a pre-game uh, reception. reception yeah. And you get early entry into the arena for this. Um, so it'd be drinks and stuff. And then uh, you get to sit together in the group and you get a pride scarf. So it's a shark's pride scarf. And then after the game, everyone gets to go to the center ice and take a big giant picture. You get to walk around the center ice and they take a big group shot of everyone together. So uh, I know I will be there. I don't know if you're going to go. I saw you talking about getting tickets, but I think you were just talking to Super Jason. Well, I, I, I think I was not You included. were going as well. I was not included in that conversation. I feel left out. If anyone would like to go with me, please. No, no. <laughs> Nobody's going to go with you with that stash. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. Uh, yeah, no, I, I would be looking forward to it. If I can make it out there, I'd love to go. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun, um, especially that you get the whole section to yourself, right? Everybody doing There's that. There's multiple so. sections. There's a bunch. Of oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. It's not just one section. Oh, I thought it was one section. It's, no, it's there's multiple. like six different sections oh, you can choose. Yeah, there's sweet. plenty of space. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, if you're interested in that, we'll put uh, a link down in the description there uh, for you to go ahead and click on that and, and check it out and yep. uh, support a really good cause as well. I plan on being there, so I will see you there. Absolutely. Are you going to be with that still? You doing it? He's keeping it. No. Come no. on. No, it's gone. Maybe just the mustache. We'll It'll see. be gone. Okay. Anyway, um, so we're done talking about all that stuff. Oh, yeah. that's what I want to say. With Seattle Kraken. The reason why we think the reason why is because actually, Super Producer Jason. The and reason the why fin they chose the Seattle why, Kraken exactly, game for the Pride game. For the Pride game, yes. Go on. Because the Fin Factor mm -hmm. suggested it so, believe it or not. And we have a little bit of pull with uh, Super Producer Jason. There, so, was a, there was a list of games, and we are like, oh, yeah. Seattle. We said that one. We gave yep. them reasons why, and lo and behold, there you go. So, Perfect. Like Aaron said, a historic game, and you're welcome. Okay? <laughs> from the Fin Factor. From us to you. Okay? We just, we give. We give mustaches. We give pride. And you give back with donations, and we appreciate that. Okay, anyway, we, I got Super Producer Jason wonder, shaking his head right now. I wonder how many people listen to the podcast because they just don't want to see our faces I, yeah. during the month of November. I think November. we've got people switching from video to, to audio. <laughs> Regardless. Okay, I'll give you my uh, my audio voice. All right, guys. 
So we'll uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Don't do that again. Don't do it again. Especially with the mustache. With the mustache, yeah, video is no good. Okay, regardless. Hey, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in again. If you're not following us on socials, please go ahead and do that. Uh, you can also make sure that you are uh, subscribed and hitting that bell because eventually we will be going live. We wanted to do it, I think, this week even, but we just haven't been able to get everything going together, the, some of the gremlins and whatnot. So maybe, perhaps, yep. we'll just go with that. Uh, but uh, when we do happen to go live, you'll know when we do that. We love having the conversations with you guys. The comments flowing in the chat section are really what make that a lot of fun. We get to kind of think on our toes and uh, we get to answer your questions. So it's, it's just a really good time. Any last it. bit you want to add I miss, I miss the lives. You miss the lives. Yeah. Okay. We'll miss you guys. So, uh, for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. So gross. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.